I found a very odd car on eBay. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. You know, I surf eBay all the time looking for cars, looking for the next, oh, Panda Research Institute candidate. And sometimes I come across some stuff that I just got to share. And this is one of those because I find it confusing and amusing, maybe slightly offensive, but uh, I don't want to dog on the guy who put a lot of work into this, but... To me, it's a little bit cringy. So I found this. It's a, a Cobra Concept, which is maybe how I was searching for it. And almost new condition. Last three photos with Peter Brock, who was actually instrumental in designing the uh, Shelby Daytona, I think, is actually the one he... Uh, the one he penned, but uh, this gentleman here, and good on him for being a wrencher and trying to develop a car, but basically took a Pontiac Solstice, the Roadster, and was kind of creating a tribute car uh, to look like a Shelby Cobra. Now, a couple things happened along the way, as far as I can tell from these pictures. I'm actually going to jump ahead here because he actually has some pictures from when he met Peter Brock and looks like he took the the uh, Pontiac Solstice, the car we know and love, and actually kind of want one of these. I wish they were a little bit more of a bauble in terms of price because I thought there was a lot of car for the money and I think it was the GXP, the turbo engine, which is one that I was really interested in. Um, but as you can see here, I'm going to get my cursor out of the way, but down on the bottom here, he has kind of taking that oval Cobra grill. You can see one in the back here, you know, the Shelby Cobra with the big oval grill and kind of crafted one onto the front of the Solstice bumper. And what I think he probably did was use like some sort of press board circle, applied it, and then what, what I'm kind of guessing is either he bondoed it in or used like a fiberglass wrap to kind of put that on and then epoxied it in. And it has a pretty distinct edge you know, kind of a, a neck that rises out from the bumper. It doesn't blend in to the to the curvature as nicely as it should. And then it also has this big front bezel to the opening where that should be almost rolled. There should be almost no edge to it. Maybe a uh, an inch roll or something, kind of like a, a muffler pipe, something like that. And so it's an effort and it's painted. Um, and, and my guess is probably for the ease of doing this, it's probably a, a buck, a wooden buck that was kind of glued on and then bondoed in and then repainted, okay? So he, I'm not going to call it get, Got the Blessing of Peter Brock, but apparently went to some show here with a bunch of cobras and uh, got a picture with him, which is kind of nice. I'm kind of guessing he's looking at it and saying, hmm, being polite. There he's driving. I think this is maybe a Superformance replica. I think he was actually instrumental in designing that, but uh, you can see it there next to each other. All right. But so what in, he says in the description is that he gave him some advice. Peter Brock said like, oh, the opening should be bigger. And so he went back and then in version 2.0 of this car, he actually did a much better job at integration. So what you can see here is that lip is much more rolled you don't have this kind of flat bezel all around it uh, I would even say here it's smoothed into the front of the bumper a little bit better it actually kind of looks a little bit like the Maserati Gran Turismo to me you know it's it, it's it's definitely a better integrated front end he's kind of extended those front stripes down there that looks like a decal on there it looks like there's a fair amount of wear and tear and even some uh cracking potentially right there so i'm assuming this was done with bondo or fiberglass something like that uh he calls them snake eye tail lenses and as far as i can tell they are just masked up and spray painted and so go snake eye tail lenses so uh just paint on top of the tail lens so other than doing some badging here which is not True, unless he actually dropped a V10 in there, which I don't think he did, but put a, some V10 badging on there and, and whatever. And he put a Cobra badge up here, too. Um, I would say that, as far as I can tell here, he's also relocated the exhaust tips from down here. And the exhaust opening is still down on the bottom. And he's put exhaust tips up there. I wouldn't be surprised if only... One of those is functional. I actually wouldn't be surprised if no, neither of them are functional and the exhaust tip is just hidden down below still, but um, that seems to be the, the extent of the body modifications, physical modifications. There are some side vents glued onto the side here. 
But uh, as you can see, these gloves hide the Pontiac logo, which would be very visible right there. Um, this is the manual transmission. I did like this dual color combo look from Pontiac at the time. But let's just say that other than painting these, uh, cutting out some holes in the bumper and relocating that, didn't hide the original exhaust opening, and then redoing the front end of this bumper, and actually not even replacing the bumper. This is a Pontiac Solstice bumper. Uh, you can see here with the, the fog lights. You know, this mouth and that exhaust on the back end are the only thing that's different. And what I am kind of a little bit skeptical is that, one, the car gets more looks than $250,000 exotic cars. It might get looks, but I don't think it's for that. You know, he says, I don't know, but, you know, if he put a V10 in it, this car would have cost over one hundred fifty k. Um, As far as I can tell, what this car is worth is getting a Pontiac Solstice that I would need to repurchase a rear bumper cover, remove these and uh, use some adhesive remover to get rid of the side vents, and then purchase a new front bumper cover, and probably the taillights. I'm assuming that maybe those taillights with those snake eyes was grafted over, and so I would have to probably just replace them. I don't know. You could probably sand them down and clear coat them, but it's probably a lot of work. So... What I see here is a Solstice that needs a new front and rear bumper cover and uh, new tail lights and remove some of this other stuff. And I would say because of that, this car should probably be five grand so that you can do all that work and have a kind of back to stock Pontiac Solstice. The car here, though, is listed as a buy it now for 29 grand. So he is pricing in his work on these custom pieces, which to me don't add the value they would retract the value now like i said uh good on this guy and good on guys for just making cars the way they want i think one of the things that i'm always challenged by is that people putting in work into their own cars always has my blessing you can do whatever you want do uh kind of rick fixes or customize it's your car you know i mean and, and i love people personalizing their cars what I think is difficult is that people will usually translate the amount of effort that they put into a car into getting compensated out of it. Even if that work is fantastic, even if you're building high quality hot rods or something like that, um, often you just don't get the money back that you put into it. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a one-off, right? And a lot of people like stock, which is why I try to keep most of my cars, most, as stock as possible or returnable to stock because people like that. They like the idea if you're buying a car that, hey, it's all stock, so I know what I've got. I don't have to open up the dashboard, find out that things have been spliced in the wiring harnesses or that, um, you know, undercarriage lights have been installed or whatever it is, or the suspension is different. And I'm not sure why, you know, did they use the right bushings or they're Frankenstein stuff. People just have some um, bugaboos about making sure that things are stock, which is why I like buying cars that are stock. But you never get your money out of it. And especially when it's not necessarily of the highest quality, uh, Oftentimes that just has to be undone. So um, the amount of effort you put into something, the amount of work you put into something, the amount of uh, love and care and uh, personal investment that you have in it is kind of irrelevant in what the market value is. And this car has been up here for a while. And uh, I bet you could probably buy this car for less than the asking price. Uh, to me, it's probably worth a few thousand bucks because I'd have to set it straight in order to use it. So just an interesting find. Like I said, don't want to bag on anyone, uh, even though I did, but uh, wanted to share it because I thought it was kind of an interesting car. More to come. See you later. Peter Ron Panda, out.